So, thanks for coming. Uh, it's always exciting to stay here. <laughs> so I would like to introduce myself. It's, uh, my name is uh, Cangelo D'Alessandro. I come from Italy. I'm architect and designer, and I moved to Germany in 2017, and I started to work in, uh, in a big company uh, as architect, of course. And I'm, use, I'm using Blender since uh, 2000, 2004, so I've seen a lot of things. Um, the company uh, uh, where I'm working is, making, is, uh, is more focused on uh, residential building, office building. And uh, this is a screenshot of our web website. And um, we, of course, use as every kind of uh, architecture office, mostly um, BIM software. And we try to integrate our process as, as well as we can with other tools. It depends on which kind of task we have to reach. So of course we use Blender. Of course we do also visualization. I have brought a couple of visualization that we used, um, that we made in the last years like for competition or maybe just to show the clients how it's going to see the residential quartier <coughs> or for other competition with a more smooth design. Um, this was a competition in the north of Deutschland, of Germany, sorry. Sometimes I, German is overtaking my English. <laughs> um, or maybe just for some kind of uh, labor offices in Heidelberg and now I'm going to show you a couple of pictures that I really like because this is the render, the original render and after that you see the final result. So it was quite interesting for me to, I, I was used to use render as a tool not as at, at the end of the process of the, of the project, rather like a, a tool with I can evaluate my decision as architect. And uh, in the office, sometimes in a big company, you have to talk with a lot of people, and sometimes the, and the understanding of the tools is sometimes a little different as you think. In this case, I show another picture that's quite interesting because when I made the render, this is on the left, I wanted to put something in the scene just to have a sort of uh, balance. It was a, just a composition need. So I put this kind of concrete ball to the right. And when the client uh, uh, saw the picture, he wanted the concrete ball. And it, it's quite interesting because sometimes the visualization is not just um, a final um, uh, result of a a project is, a, is a, an open range. So I go further. Of course, we make also a lot of uh, interior design. This was quite interesting because uh, the client wanted to have the, the lamps. It's a floss company from Italy. And I was just uh, rigging the lamp in a very basic way. I don't make any kind of rigging activity. But with the empty and uh, some constraint, I was able to uh, to uh, to, to have a, on an object that I could orient as, a, as, a, as well as I wanted. And other nice interior design. I love interior renderings, of course. It's more like fancy and cozy sometimes. And, okay, still another one. It's not working? Yes, it's working. And I also make a lot of interior, uh, let's say, product design. The chair, the chaise long you see here is my design, and so on. But, so far so good. If you make renderings at the end of a project, everybody knows that. Everybody is used to, to, to do it. I mean, at least people that are working with interior design companies or maybe with architecture companies. But I would like to share with you a couple of real life cases where we started using Blender to um, solve some kind of problems that we could not solve with the normal BIM software 
or maybe that would be much faster to do it in Blender than in other software. So, case number one, recover actual buildings. This was a very nice, interesting project in Berlin. It's a huge building with uh, ab about 24,000 square meters uh, surface. And what we had to do was just to focus on the first uh, three four floors, ground floor, first floor, and uh, second floor, just to rearrange the, um, the spaces and the units. The building was like this. I, I, I should have to, to uh, change the, build, the, the, the slides. OK, this is a, a very basic uh, ground floor. What you see in, in uh, light gray was used as a, as a pedestrian area and on the ground floor. So we had to reuse these surfaces to build new units and gain more, more square meters. So I go shortly back. This is an example just to show how we wanted to um, arrange or uh, the, to, to get new units that has to be connected over three uh, levels. Uh, so this project was made uh, with a lot of uh, punctual intervention and elements, and I want to show you uh, one specific, uh, specific one, because we wanted to gain inside the skylight areas uh, a, si a sort of rooms that is to protruding in the inside the area to gain more light and maybe get more uh, square meters. And those rooms had to have something like this, like a sort of cage, let's say, with blades. And the idea was to make blades, a twisted blade, with a twisting point uh, positioned on a different kind, uh, different Z values. So at the end, something like this. If we wanted to design something like this in a BIM software, at least the one we use in the office, it was very time consuming, so I, I I thought, okay, I can do it with Blender, just making a basic 2D uh, mesh with a couple of loop cuts on the, on the z-axis. Then another couple of loop, loop cuts that can barely see in the middle. Um, twist it, add some more loop cuts just to have a smooth transition. Then give a, a solidify modifier put uh, an empty object with the data groups hooked to the empty object. And then here you see a little bit how it was the... It's very basic. I mean, it's not that complicated, but it's effective. Just to get this kind of uh, result. Now the problem was to have a different kind of blades a sort of array and change punctually, individually, the position of the of each twist. So I was thinking about okay, make with the, with the shape keys. I can tweak every kind, every single empty, but I wanted to have a smooth line. So I thought, okay, I can use uh, a surface, <laughs> as always, with a couple of loop cuts, maybe a curve, a shrink wrap of the surface to the curve, or let's say a curve modifier, and at the end, projecting each empty to the surface. And that's very, also very basic, but very effective. And at the end of the day, I was able to get in a very quick way something like this. So just using a curve, I was able to design the final look of these twisting lines. There is another one in uh, elevation. Just to see how it works. Okay. Uh, after that, we made uh, also a lot of visualization because this element, this blade element, was used in the, inside the project in many different situations, like interior design and in, uh, in the. Uh, outdoor and so on, and those are a couple of visualization in the in the staircase and just to redesign every single. As, as you can see, there are not the the most accurate renderings because the, it was like just to show to the client in which direction we wanted to go. Um, 
this is an elevation and this is also a very nice um, slide because the blades were also uh, thought for a, a huge um, lobby area and we wanted to design a staircase that has to look like an animal, a, a low poly animal. You can do it with, also with the BIM software, but it would cost too much time. So we did it also in Blender. It's really interesting because we were used to change. At that time, I was not, uh, still not involved in uh, Blender Beam or actual bonsai, so we had to uh, communicate with the OB uh, yacht or the OBJ files, just keeping always the same position. So at the end, I had to export from Blender only the objects that I made in Blender directly as a DAE files or STL or it doesn't matter. I mean, the, the, the 3D formats are very, we have a lot of 3D formats, let's say so. This is another case where we had to design the staircase to connect two levels inside, um, let's say, a fixed position. We had a very small diameter, and I tried to model the, the staircase inside the BIM software, but the, it was not, not that easy because you had to, to, to look to parameters and a lot of things that was not really good working. So I decided to make it in Blender, and it was always maybe one hour work complete, I mean, also with the visualization. Um, and then, of course, I, when, when you, uh, you get more uh, fun and you try to put some plants and some lighting and some sculptures, and it, it's nice. I love Blender. <laughs> so, uh, you see here other samples or situation uh, that are always related to this project, like entrance of a restaurant. It's an Italian one, paparazzi. It's cannot be from uh, Germany. <laughs> and the outside of the building with uh, new portals, lines, and stuff like that. And uh, this is also very interesting. Uh, we had to reinforce, you see to the right, this kind of cage. We had to reinforce the glass facade of uh, existing, um, uh, let's say, um, um, doctor houses, I don't know how to say in English. And we had to put this facade to an a, a, a existing one. So this is the rendering, always to communicate to the client how it's going to look, which kind of light we can integrate and so on. And it's interesting to me because inside the office was growing up the interest to use in rendering not only as a final output, rather as a, a constant, uh, let's say, uh, tool that you use inside the, the decision proce uh, process. This is always the same project. It's a less worth uh, object, but at the end we had to make some opening to the, in the, inside the, the ground to, to, uh, to get air in the, in inside the, the, the underground spaces. So, case number two, everything is a triangle. What I really love is that at the end of the day, we, we can use NURBS surface, we can use everything, but at the end, we have always three points and a plane, that's it. But sometimes triangles are not very, let's say, easy to manage if you want to uh, translate it inside, uh, uh, let's say, a construction element. This is another project, three building offices, and the main idea was to make a, a sort of low poly um, uh, uh, roof uh, with different kind, as you can see here, with different kind of uh, inclination. Um, in design concept were, was very nice and easy, but when we came to the uh, realization phases, we had to understand that the triangle at the roof was not a good idea, <laughs> or at least not so, not so easy. This is an elevation that I got from my colleagues, 
it's very nice, but you have to figure out that every connection between the, uh, the, the roof parts is a different kind of uh, inclination in the contact phase. Again, uh, we could design it inside BIM software with a lot of problems, a lot of uh, time. So I thought to rebuild the geometry inside Blender, just get maybe some out nice outlines for every roof, um, uh, every, every level, uh, just to um, uh, as outline for our project. And then I extracted only the the surface of the roof and with the, a very basic geometry node um, extrusion to get this kind of uh, thickness. After that I was uh, separating each, each kind of triangle and then looping again the faces just to get an object that was imported inside our BIM software like this. And it was so precise that we could send it to the CNC machining. At the end of the day, we also had to put some stuff like under construction or reinforcement uh, made out of uh, wood. Or stuff like that, the windows. That was also very tricky because every window has uh, two different planes and uh, the frame around has to be modeled in a different ways. Uh, so, um, yes, we have here a couple of visualization. Here is the render, and here the final result. Also, for this staircase, we had to use triangle, and it was quite interesting to make this kind of ping pong between uh, BIM software and Blender. This is another case. The renderings were made from a, from a very good colleague uh, that was uh, uh, fell in love with Blender at once at Glenn's, and yes, the building is ready, it's finished. Now, case number three: exploring geometry. I okay, get so fast. Uh, I just show you quickly a couple of um, animation here. Just, uh, I, I'm not used to make um, uh, motion graphic, but it was quite interesting to do that uh, for, for showing the flexibility of the spaces. And I just go further with this kind of example. I had to figure out new methods to, um, let's say, to, to uh, make it an architectural concept. So I, was, I love to use improperly Blender, like using weight paints and maybe some simulation. And that's what I, what I got it at the end of the day. And yes, this is finished. And finally, I, I have to hurry up a little bit. And finally, the final render with compositing directly in Blender. I love to also sometimes do, do stuff that I don't do every day. <laughs> This is a very nice project. I love it. It was uh, very challenging. It's uh, like everything is a plane and it was a sort of competition inside the Heidelberg uh, city in a big area. And what I have to do is uh, just to make a building, a huge building with, uh, with uh, a connection between two uh, areas with a middle court, but the, I, the basic idea was to have a continuous surface without planes, like without stairs. So I uh, started working with Blender and making it uh, with uh, just low poly uh, geometries and connecting it and then uh, using a, a couple of mo solidify modifier. You see here quickly a couple of uh, uh, samples. It was quite complicated at the end. And here a very quick animation. Just to see, it looks like a bone or something like that. <laughs> and here you see a couple of visualization at the end. It was a very futuristic, I loved it. With a lot of drones and a couple of uh, robots. Or maybe some 
weird labor. And at the end, we had also the possibility to make a small model like this, and that's it. Last case, not just a render. I go very fast. My time runs out. And we used in this, for this project a lot of renderings to convince and orient the decision of the clients. Like from the outside, I mean, just how the building looks like, but in particular for the inside, just to using specific products like seating products or maybe lighting or maybe stuff like uh, floss lights and uh, wooden panels and stuff like that and what i have to say now blender is very uh, an important part inside our process in every phases i mean from communicating to designing uh, this i love this rendering i like it and I had to model, for instance, the, those lamps here. And at the end, also for something like this, a sustainable uh, prefabricated structures. And sorry for people that speak German can understand. Uh, it was just to show to the client how was uh, supposed to build the basic module of the building. That's it. And it was uh, very funny. I loved to sometimes to make animation like this, just to explain how it works. So, uh, I ran out of my time, it was too short. <laughs> I thank you for being here and for listening, and that's it. Thanks.